uh, this has been a work which has taken quite a lot of time, but I know exactly how it started, but maybe you'd like to tell anyone who doesn't know how it started. Yes, in, in true April fashion, I like to say it takes a long time to, <laughs> get, to get on with that. But, um, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> um, yeah, it started, well, it actually started as an um, album insert artwork for um, Cover's album that Dad did, Scratch My Back, I'll Scratch Yours. Um, and uh, we were trying to figure out a way to um, represent the artist that he covered. And so we thought, well, what about using an ID, like a form of ID? And we thought, well, the eyes and the sound prints are a form of all of our ID. And um, so the first 11 or so people that I did for the album were sort of the eye and the thumb. And as I was shooting them, I thought, actually, the eye is, is really interesting and we should continue this with, uh, with more people. So it kind of uh, carried on from there. But Although Paul Simon's thumb still made it. In yes, the <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> left eye or right eye? Yeah, and, and weirdly, like most people rap, uh, like wanted to do their, I think it's the right eye, except for Laurie Anderson, I found was interesting, wanted the other one, which, <laughs> and she's got a song, My Left Eye. Oh, is that right? I think so, yeah, uh -huh. which was kind of, it just happened to be a little ironic there, but um, yeah, no, it, it was, I mean, I think it was also partly me gravitating, partly them turning to one side that naturally happened that everyone so better right side. <laughs> and you took everyone except one? Yes, I did all the, all the photos except for Lou Reed, who um, uh, it was really a scheduling conflict at the time because he was part of the covers album, so there was a limited time to do those photographs. And so he um, he said, oh, well, don't worry, I'll, I'll do it myself. And he's a, you know, a, was an avid photographer and, and really enjoyed <coughs> photography. And, uh, took this interesting photo that was very blurry and abstract and sent it over and I thought, oh dear, this is way too abstract and it's very different to a thing. And then I really grew to love it. It was sort of had a very spiritual aspect about it and uh, you can only just make out the eye as a shadow and the light in the shadow. And so, so I included it because I thought it was a, a special one, a self-portrait. Laurie actually wrote a lovely little piece about it, which is in the book. So, because uh, he was he was very good, I believe. He used to sort of take apart cameras, and you know he loved the technology. So that was a nice uh, nice memory. But tell me about uh, where these photos were taken, mainly. Uh, how did they decide? Did you decide? Um, I, they decided. I wanted to try and make. Um photograph as easy as possible for the subject matter to take. So I, I um, would make it just me, camera, no lighting, using natural daylight, and uh, so there was very little setup. It was, I'd sort of come to, and because it was a macro shot of the eye, they didn't have to, they didn't have to prepare. Um, so there was no, like, which I think actually helped with the intimacy factor of the photographs, because there was no hair, makeup, setup, time to do it. It was right in there and get it get the shot, which kind of, I think you get a bit more intimate with the person, with the subject. Um, but we did it, I did it many different places, just trying to grab them in 15 minutes, which was you know, backstage at shows, in hotel rooms, at people's houses, offices. Um, so it was sort of all over the place, which, which was interesting, because you really kind of had to do it on the fly, a lot of it. Um, but I went in with, often with an idea of sort of what I thought of the person and what I wanted to get. A vague idea and then walk in the door and sort of throw out all the ideas and, and go with the moment. <laughs> I'm curious because obviously with most of us entertainers we're used to trying to control our image or that we often fail but how many people were happy to sort of let you control an image and trust you? Was that a, I would an say, issue? No, I would say more than we were actually really open to that. I think because a, because it, again, they didn't really have time to even think about it because it was straight in and um, right up against their face. So it's a bit, you know, just the dynamic of having the camera right on your face is an interesting dynamic uh, between me and them. It kind of puts you immediately in an awkward, or the subject matter in an awkward position or 
did and you know some, some people were very easy with that and, and relaxed completely and it made other people a bit more this makes me feel you know awkward and strange so it was um yeah it was an interesting um, reaction to that kind of question <laughs> I mean, but anyway, when you had the different people, right, and you had different um, situations, um, were they coming up with ideas? Were you coming up, say, Mick yeah, Fleetwood, yeah. for instance, and... Mick, I actually, I, that one I, I came up your with. Idea. Yeah, I sort of wanted to, because he's a drummer, and he often wears the, the, the wristbands, I wanted to put that to be part of it, um, and have him look through it, so I actually, I directed him quite a bit in that one. But someone like David Byrne, for example, who, played the second I walked in with his eye, he was doing all sorts of crazy things, and I thought, this is perfect, this is very him, and he ended up pulling his eyelid all over the place, and so that's, that's what happened there. <laughs> um, but it was, it was very good for him, so. No one was injured in the process. <laughs> uh, and I know you said that uh, trying to grab Johnny Depp was one of the most difficult ones, so why was that? It was difficult. He was. It was backstage at one of um, the Hollywood Vampire shows, so it was um, chaos. It's a sort of very um, backstage madness where it's before the show, so um, people were trying to get ready. There was a lot of people trying to speak to him and reach him, and I sort of sat around waiting in the in the dressing room, and um, also was thinking, how am I going to shoot this one? Because it was no natural daylight backstage, so it was um, trying to find a light that would. Uh, work with the macro lens, so I ended up finding, going in his dressing room bathroom, which was the lightest spot backstage, which was a horrible fluorescent light, but it ended up being fine for the, for the photo and worked. Um, <coughs> and Where did the glasses come from? The glasses I actually picked out before, I had a few things that I was like, wanting to play with a bit, and, and I picked them out in a store in these footage, and one of the lenses was missing, and I just sort of felt like him, and, and I thought, oh, well, I'll do some with and some without, and, and, and I asked him to wear them and he was like, it's very strange you asked me this because the one with the lens missing is the eye that he actually has some trouble seeing out of. So it sort of made a lot of sense for him. Um, and so I kept, kept the ones with the glasses. Yeah, I, I yeah. like that one. So do you have a favorite? I love the Nadia from Pussy Reds. She's from the second, the inside the page. But yeah. I think the, just the, the front. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but just, I shot her on the street in LA, but, and you know, she also wanted to use the masks that they're known for. Um, and she cut the whole, she actually didn't have one on her, so we went and bought a woolly hand and she cut a hole in it and made the mask. And it just sort of worked perfectly, and, and I like just the way it's framed and the way her eye comes, pops through the, that, that mask that I got her. And I know you had to, have two goes for one. Uh, yeah, two goes for you. <laughs> I, uh, well, the first time round, the first time round, I thought, and we shot, it was obviously, Dad was one of the first people I shot, and I hadn't kind of come up, fully developed the idea, and, and we were just doing, playing around at the house, and we went outside, and the, the image that I had was very dark. I mean, not as in the light, but as in the feeling about it, it was felt very dark, and almost angry, and it was sort of the opposite to, so I ended up wanting to do it again, and I think the second time around it felt a lot more real as to the second one. I like it a lot. Good. <laughs> and what would you say is the principal difference uh, in this book to other portraits? Well, I think, um, you know, when you're cutting down something to just someone's eyes, um, really sort of getting much more intimate. And I think, especially with people, faces that you've seen a lot in the media and you, you know, you know them well, it's a different way to kind of look at the person and maybe get a different view of who they are. Um, so, and you, you know, you can gain so much for the eyes. I keep saying that obviously all of us the last few years have been walking around like this and, um, and you, you still realize how much you can communicate through the eyes without the mouth, without the nose, and, and um, you know, I think it's it's a really special thing. So it, it's a new, you know, kind of a different, interesting way to look at these people. I think. And do you think this project was tougher than you imagined, or? 
pretty much what you expected. I think what I expected, the, the hardest part was just scheduling time with people, I think. <laughs> um, with people all over the place and trying to, you know, traveling around and doing albums and, and tours and all that. Uh, that's what took the most time, I think. But the, the actual shoots, and I think the more I went along, the more, you know, obviously the more you get into the groove of what you're doing. Um, but, uh, so no, it, it didn't feel, and I think just the, the idea that it's, um, was just me and a camera and no, no setup made it very simple. It really, it really allowed me to kind of play more with the actual shooting than trying to figure out a much bigger picture. Do you think uh, you'd like to do more or is it going to be toes or ears? <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been asked to do a few hands and bits and bobs, but I, uh, there's nothing I quite like. <laughs> Um, but the She's eyes. my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I got to a point where you know I was like, oh, I should get so and so. I'd really love to get this person, this person. And I thought, you know what? I've got fifty four. It's like fifty five coming now. What it is, but I was like, I can stop now. It's it's got to it's got to finish. So um, it just got to that point where I said, no, that's that's done. Enough of a book and let's move on. And why did you want to turn them into cards? Yes, I had also decided to make playing cards just because I really wanted to have ID cards. <laughs> um, so uh, I actually have a, a version which is a, a playing card deck with all the photographs and it's a perfect number of quality. So who is the Joker? Yeah, well, I, I made, funny, I made Richard Branson and David Cohen the Jokers. <laughs> Great. So, yeah. Well, I think I'm running out of questions here, but maybe some people have some, who've seen it might have some specific questions about um, some of the different um, photos. You want, okay. Yeah. So they do that. Thank you. Um, out of sort I was wondering, as I was looking at all the photos, you would think they'd be more vain. Like, I, I looked at Debbie Harry, usually her eyes are done up like gorgeous, and she has minimal makeup on. Was that her choice? And even when I'm looking up here, I see like little red lines in the eyes, like no one had vanity? No, it was actually amazing. I thought a lot of people, and I asked everyone, you know, in terms of retouching the photograph and whether, you know, they felt comfortable if they wanted to like, look a little nicer, and I did very minimal retouching on them, and, um, and everyone was very comfortable with it, so. It was, it was surprising to me, I, I, I was very happy though, because I think obviously you can get a lot more real, real stuff out of it without, without the touch -ups. Somebody over there? Right here? Okay. Um, hi, that's right. Okay. Uh, so I'm wondering if you did any pre-studying oh. with your subjects beforehand as to uh, mm -hmm. what, what my ideas in terms of their facial structure or anything like that, or was it all just a spur of the moment? No, it was all spur of the moment. As I say, I, I would um, look at, you know, kind of think about what I felt about the person or knew about the person. Some of the people I knew well, some of them I had never met before, um, and come up with a, a vague sort of framing idea that I wanted to do. And then as when I went in, I sort of had that in my mind, but kind of went with the situation and went with the moment. Thank you. Yeah. I'll pass the back. Oh, I didn't I did talk. Yeah. Sure. Any, like, uh, damaged eyes, freckles, like I have a freckle over there. Guys, like anything unusual that, that, that you saw as you were doing the project? Interesting. I, I don't think so. I, I think. Yeah, not, not that I can remember anything stuck out. Would you like to take a photo of my freckled eyes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need some intramural interesting eyes. Hello, so as I was taking it all in because there's a lot happening. A photo, um, and I'm, I'll leave sorry for a split second before the screen change, uh, change was of Shane McGowan. Yes. And I just saw so much life in his eyelid, in his eye, and it's like an illuminated tiny circle reflecting like out of his pupil. I was just curious about that photo shoot, that how was, he was. Yeah, that was a very interesting one, because we, um, I went with my husband to um, Dublin to shoot him, and it was, 
Christmas Eve, I think, when we went over to his house and his birthday's Christmas Day, and so it was all, and he was, he wasn't so well at the time, but he was sitting, so he was in his armchair at home, and, and he, you know, he was, um, they were completely, like him and his uh, wife were relaxed in Christmas vibe, watching Christmas TV and having a drink and, and chocolates and all that, and so we sat there and, and chatted, and they, you know, I think, in, I find in Ireland they just, Chat, 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 and tell stories for a long time. <laughs> and so, and I was thinking when I was sitting there, am I ever going to get this shot done? Um, but it was, I mean, it was a great time. And we had, and I finally was like, oh, you know, maybe we should do the shot quickly. And, and, um, and grabbed it in sort of, you know, like 10, five, 10 minutes, because it was like so perfect. The, the light was a light in his living room that was reflected in his eye. But um, he, uh, yeah, he was great. He was, um, you know, it, it, it was, Really lovely feeling because he was, you know, it was Christmas time and he was at home and relaxing with the family. So it was, um, if I feel like I captured that moment in that photograph too. Yeah, I have to see it. Yeah, thank you. Hi there. Hi. Um, was there anybody that you wanted to include that didn't end up making it into the book? There were quite a few that I'd love to have included. A couple off the top of my head, I would love to have got Tina Turner as one of them. And uh, I actually wanted to get Brian Scorsese because his eyebrows and his eyes are pretty amazing. Um, but that didn't, you know, it was, the timing wasn't right for that. But um, I mean, I could go on though. There's a lot of people I'd love to get. <laughs> First of all, um, it's really an honor to have you here. Thank you, and, and it's really delightful to, to be exposed to your daughter's um, creative energy for the first time for me. And I'm wondering if you can talk about uh, what it's like to be a creative who is the child of a creative and finding your own place and purpose. I'm very interested by that. Yeah, well, I think what I love is that Dad and I actually have very similar taste, I think, in Art and, um, and creative and creating things, and it, I think I love one of the things I love to do is, is sort of brainstorm with him because it's a lot of fun having this sort of same taste in something and coming up with ideas. Um, so I, you know, I think a lot of my creative sense definitely comes from him, um, and, and my sister also. Um, my mom is also with similar taste as well. We all kind of have a very similar creative process, and. Um, and uh, you know, so it's. I think, you know, being you know, being his daughter is it's one of those things that's always very you know helpful to get through the front door, as it were. But then you kind of have to stand on your own two feet once you're there. So it's it's um, both good and bad, I think. Yeah, I think there are as many disadvantages as there are. As many disadvantages as there are. evoke certain um, emotions and I know you I, I read in, in some interviews that you weren't specifically looking for any emotions you just wanted to capture what you captured was there any photos that stood out to you in terms of the emotion that you did capture that's a good question I uh, have to kind of run through it in my mind now um, I think one that there were two actually I, that pop into mind, Susan Sarandon and um, Kevin Bacon, and they, because they were both looking out the window at the time, and really, Susan was interesting because she was actually one very interested in the project, and we constantly were chatting about the idea of eyes and, and what they represent, and we were sort of deep in conversation. But the moment that I captured, she was sort of looking out of the window, and then the same with um, Kevin Bacon, they were, they were sort of almost lost in thought, and there was something very peaceful with both of them. There was a very still moment that I really liked. Um, you know, with most of the, most of the people, I got sort of several different, you know, moments within the, the, the when I was shooting, as I was shooting, and, uh, and I chose the ones that sort of 
felt the strongest to me. Um, so as you go, if you know, if you went through with one person, if you went through several photos, I think there were different emotional moments, I think, within with them, and I just picked the one I felt was the strongest. Okay, we ended there. Great, yes, thank you, thank you all. And